talk. So my name is uh, Alexei. Hello. Um, so today um, I'm going to talk about uh, automatic image cropping and how we went from a master thesis project to a live production system. Um, first of all, the, the things I'm going to present is ju not just my work. There are a lot of people involved into this. First of all, the master stu student herself who did all the work I'm going to present. And then, uh, <laughs> uh, and then uh, a couple of other people uh, uh, supported uh, us along the way. Um, so it's actually a collaboration between uh, three um, sort of business entities. So first, uh, OLX Group, where I work, uh, then Naspers, our parent company, and uh, Eindhoven University of Technology, where the student uh, did her master's. So uh, about me, um, I am a software engineer in the past, but then at some point I decided to go to data science. I did master's uh, in business intelligence, and then uh, I've been doing machine learning for six years. Um, and now I work as a data scientist as, at OLX Group. Um, so the plan of this talk today, uh, first we'll, um, I'll give a bit of motivation why, uh, why image cropping is important in online classifieds. Um, then I'll talk about a particular approach uh, for image cropping, uh, silency detection. Uh, then uh, how we can do silency detection with neural networks. Uh, it's a bit of theory. Um, and then about experiments that the student did. Um, and then about how we, we took the system and uh, <coughs> made it live. So first of all, so probably every one of you uh, is familiar with uh, uh, online classifieds. So uh, if you're from Germany, maybe you know this site, uh, website, eBay Kleinanzeigen. So this is the place where you go uh, if you want to sell something. Uh, you don't need, you go to this website and sell it there. And people who want to buy something, uh, they go to the site and find something they need. Um, OLX is similar to eBay, eBay, except we don't have a market presence in uh, Germany. Uh, we have, uh, we're present in uh, other countries like Poland, Ukraine, and India. In this example, this is uh, OLX uh, from India, but the idea is the same. This is the place where people go to sell things they don't need. This is the place where people go to buy things they want. Um, and in online classifieds, people who visit, uh, who visit the website, the buyers, they want to see uh, the things uh, clearly. So when you as a seller take a picture, and the picture might, be, uh, might include too many details that are not uh, necessary. For example, in this case, somebody wants to sell a car, but the car is uh, like there is a lot of background around the car. So what we want to do is actually focus on the most important thing in the picture is the car itself and get rid of the background. Another example where the car is also somewhere in the center, so a lot of background would be nice to crop it all out um, and uh, only focus on the car itself. And there are many, many examples where something like this happens, where people don't think that this is important, but for buyers, when they come onto the platform and look, f see something like this in the, new, in, in the home feed or search results, this is difficult for them to, to see what is there, um, so they often don't click on these things. So the hypothesis we wanted to test here is that indeed, uh, uh, if we have a properly cropped image, uh, then, uh, it leads to better visibility, uh, then people click more often, then at the end, actually, uh, people buy things faster or sell things faster. Um, so this is what we wanted to test in the master thesis. Um, to approach this, uh, uh, we can use silency detection. So silency is detecting the most important object in the picture, uh, the silent object. So in this case, we have the engagement rings and then uh, the output of the silency detection system is a mask. Uh, actually, it is a probability for each pixel that it, whether each pixel is, belongs to a silent object or not. So we put in uh, a picture and get out uh, an array of probabilities. 
for each pixel we have a probability whether it's silent or not, and then it gives us this mask. And then what we can do uh, next is we can get the bounding box of the silent object, uh, add some border to make it visu visually nicer, and then crop it. Uh, also, one of the applications of silency detection is image uh, background removal. Uh, so here I just opened Microsoft Paint and to give you <laughs> an illustration. Um, like a neural network should do this better, but we didn't experiment with background removal. Uh, but this is one of the use cases of uh, silency detection. How can we do this? Of course, uh, nowadays everything is possible to do with neural nets. So silency detection is not uh, an exception. Um, so I'll do now a bit of uh, theoretical introduction. So uh, it might be a bit difficult to do this in a conference setup, uh, but I tried to include the links. So if you feel a bit lost, then later you can go check the slides and get uh, uh, follow the links and get more information about this. Um, so first of all, um, there is a thing called convolutional neural network. This is a classical model, now classical, for five years or more, uh, for image classification. Does somebody not know uh, convolutional neural networks? Everybody knows. Yes, good. So basically, you take an image, you send it to network, and network tells the what is on this image, the probability, like what kind of object is there. Um, and it does this by taking a picture and sliding a window through this and applying uh, <coughs> some filters. And then we take a window, apply it to all three channels, and then we get a number. We slide the window, get another number. And this way, we build these uh, kind of features. Um, so we have many, many layers. So, and at the end, we have a prediction. Um, with, uh, sorry. Um, this can give us classification, but this is not what we want. We want to detect a silent object. So the next step we can do is we can take this uh, uh, convolutional neural network and remove the last layer and replace it with convolutional layer. So what happens is uh, it's like on the top we have a <coughs> usual network that gets an image and predicts uh, what is the probability that we have a cat on the image. So what we can do is we can get our classifier get an image, and again, take a sliding window, and for each window, do um, a prediction. <coughs> so this is what, in essence, fully convolutional uh, networks do. So they slide a classifier through an image. And this way, we get this activation map saying where the cat is. So this we can use to uh, not just know that there is a cat, but know exactly where the cat is, because uh, it will give us some locality information. And then we can add another layer that uh, gets this map and then says, OK, here's a cat. Um, but uh, if we use only the last layer, we lose information. Like there is some special information that we have on the previous steps. It makes sense to use it as well. So the next step is the, the model we ended up using is DSS network. It's deeply supervised uh, silency, uh, deeply supervised keep connection silency object detection network. So what it does, it uh, doesn't just look at this um, layer, it looks at everything, at, at all the layers. So it looks at the first convolutional layer and then checks, OK, what is the object there? Then the next one, the next one. So it looks at all possible layers, and then at the end, combines it into one. So this is the way we build it, is we take a standard classical uh, convolutional model, like VGG, uh, and then on, on top of each output, we, we take the output and then um, do so-called deep supervision, and then combine it at the end to get the most uh, the detailed information about the silent object. It's a bit more complex. Probably I shouldn't go into details, uh, uh, but you can check the paper here. Um, so because they want to make it even better, and these short connections are doing exactly that. Uh, so please uh, check the link. Um, and of course, with uh, nowadays, uh, we're very lucky if we take a paper. Usually, there is an implementation of this paper somewhere. Um, in our case, um, 
there was a TensorFlow implementation. We used TensorFlow uh, for, uh, for image models. So there was a TensorFlow implementation that we took um, and worked with that. Um, and this is uh, an example of the output of this network. So get a car, and then it finds the uh, silent region, uh, silent object of the car, gives us the mask, and then we crop it. Um, another example, uh, uh, children boots. Uh, watches uh, also <coughs> pretty nice. Doesn't always work though. So there are some cases where it cannot detect, um, especially when the image quality is quite low or when there are objects that this neural net doesn't know. So we thought, okay, we know that in some cases it doesn't really work well, in some cases it works well. We ran some experiments. We did some experiments to define where we should uh, actually run this model. So as a playground um, for testing this model, we cho chose uh, OLX Portugal. Uh, we took uh, all, the, uh, all the categories from OLX Portugal, and we randomly sampled 200 images from each category. With uh, these images, we just applied the model and then manually looked, like manually evaluated. Just looked at the results and said, uh, brought down whether the results are good or not. So this looked like this. So we get an image, we see the, the mask, and we see how well it was cropped. In this case, it was a successful, successful crop, but sometimes we have unsuccessful crops. Uh, so for example, in these cases, uh, like uh, the image of a dog was not the best quality, so the model was very confused. And then, for example, this, uh, I don't know this, uh, how this thing is called, uh, but yeah, so it basically only looked uh, at the wheels and didn't get the, the rest of the thing. This way, we annotated all this data, all the 200 images from each category, and came up with uh, some conclusions, like, okay, we saw that the model performs quite well in cars, and in um, uh, clothes, uh, and it was pretty bad, like pretty awful in real estate, in properties. And in properties, it makes sense, like when, for example, you take a picture of kitchen, then it doesn't make sense to crop it and uh, just concentrate on the fridge, right? The whole room is important. Um, so that's why for real estate, it was awful. So we have three good candidates for uh, selecting where to run the, the model. The, so cars, animals, and fashion clothes. Um, cars, uh, from business perspective, uh, was quite important. So because we don't, uh, like this is the category that brings most of the money, we don't want to accidentally crop a car, uh, crop an image of a car, uh, like to, to, to remove like a part of a car and then <coughs> customers come to us saying, hey, what's going on? So we decided it's too risky. Then for animals, uh, uh, the model was doing really good, but the business opportunity there was unclear. So it doesn't make much money and then, uh, People are getting, uh, like, exchanging, like how to say, not selling, but sometimes they giving away animals for free. It was doing pretty well without any intervention. So, like, people are able to exchange dogs and cats right now. But with fashion, uh, the fashion was problematic from a uh, business uh, side uh, because it was already, like, low liquidity, meaning that uh, most of the items there didn't end up uh, being sold. So somebody tries to sell a pair of, uh, pair of shoes, but they, nobody buys them. So we decided this is the best opportunity for this model because the model is doing pretty well there and uh, we want to improve liquidity there. So we, go, we, 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 we went with fashion. So we chose the category. Now let's implement this. Let's put it to production. So we have a cropping service. This is the actual uh, model that the, the system, uh, the, the student developed. Uh, sorry, I don't know what was that. So the cropper, the component called cropper, takes in an image and returns back a cropped image. As simple as that. And then sometimes the image is already good enough. So in this case, the system doesn't do anything. So it analyzes and says, okay, could no cropping needed. It just returns to all four saying nothing to crop. 
And then uh, imagine you're a user, you want to sell something. Engagement rings, for example. You come to Alex, you publish it. Uh, then it goes to an internal queue. Like all these ads from fashion categories, uh, category go there. And then from this queue, they go to a component called image enhancer. So this is what we call, but basically what this thing does, it pulls, listens to the queue, pulls the messages from there, and uh, for each message, for each ad, for each uh, image, it first gets the image itself from image hosting. So we have a special uh, image hosting uh, service, uh, internal one. So we get the image, and then we send the image to the cropper. Then the cropper responds back with the cropped image. Then we put the cropped image back to the hosting. And then we save all the results in a database. So in this database, what we save is for each uh, listing ID, we save the ID of the cropped image. And this database has that. S and we also write everything to Slack. So Slack is amazing for uh, trying to tap into the current stream of events just to see what's going on. It's very visual, and if something goes wrong in Slack, we can immediately see and react. Uh, so for every, every time somebody posts an ad, we see this in Slack. Of course, most of the time this channel ends up being muted, but still we can go there and check and observe and see, okay, yeah, this something is wrong, let's try to fix it. Um, this was especially important when we were just uh, uh, starting to use it. And then later, when we saw it, it's doing good, so we just made it digital. Um, so what happens uh, when uh, buyers come to the platform? So they go to Oilix. Uh, this is a pretty old backend service with a lot of legacy. Um, and there, inside this backend, we made a small change there to actually, uh, in some cases, because we wanted to experiment, in some cases, uh, for example, randomly for 1%, we, the, the backend talk to, we call enhancer frontend, but this is the thing that just looks up the, these IDs in, uh, in database. So user comes, wants to load an image, we check, okay, do we have a cropped image for, for this ad? If yes, then the number responds yes, then we return it back to the, to the backend. And this way we display a cropped image. Uh, but for some users, we don't do this, uh, they still see the original, and then this way we can evaluate whether it makes um, impact or not. Sometimes uh, maybe something happened and we didn't process the image, or maybe the cropper said uh, no cropping is needed, so we don't have a record in database. In this case, front end says, I don't know what, there is no cropped image, so the, the system just shows the, the original image. So this is how it looks uh, at the end, so the whole infrastructure. Um, so what happens when there are a lot of users um, who want to sell some clothes at the same time? So of course, our queue gets overly populated, so there are a lot of items that we need to process. So first of all, it's not a big deal if we're delayed, because the worst case, what happens is the user don't see a cropped image, so this is okay. Um, but we can just scale it up. So we use Kubernetes, we can just say, hey, when there are many messages in the queue, scale it up. And then um, when we do this, we need to scale the cropper as well. So cropper is a heavy service um, because it uh, uses neural nets inside. So we need quite a few of them uh, to deal with the load. Uh, so Kubernetes can scale that as well. And then uh, everybody is happy. We can process this uh, almost real time. So remember, this is the cropper is a service that was originally written by master students, so it might not be um, of best engineering standards. Uh, sometimes it may die, it may fail. Not a big deal, we just let it fail and let Kubernetes take uh, care of uh, bringing it back to life. So when something like this happens, when the service dies for some reasons, uh, so the, the enhancer gets timeout, the, the service is dead. Then the message just go, goes back to the queue. Then uh, the service picks it up later. <coughs> Meanwhile, the cropper is back to life and is able to process. If a message is problematic, then after a few attempts, it just uh, goes, to, goes away. Yes, that's uh, 
most of my talk. So just a short summary. So the hypothesis we wanted to test is whether proper cropping leads to good performance. I'm sorry that I haven't really answered that. Yes, we did an experiment. Uh, the experiment is still ongoing. The results are promising, but for A-B tests, it's, uh, you shouldn't uh, jump early to conclusions. So, uh, But it's promising. Um, silency detection is a good approach for image cropping. And uh, one of the models that uh, can do this is uh, DSS. Uh, this is Deep Supervision uh, Skip Connections Network. Um, it's uh, important to be data driven and not just apply to everything, but be <coughs> smarter when selecting where to apply the model. And uh, in our case, we try to find the intersection between what makes sense, ma makes most sense from the business perspective and what makes most sense from the model perspective. So on the intersection where both are good, this is where we went. Um, Slack is a great way to sneak peek and see what's going on, especially important at the beginning to verify that it's doing well. Uh, Kubernetes is a great tool that takes uh, care of scaling for you. Uh, and uh, we can just, if it crashes, we just let it crash and let the infrastructure uh, bring it back, back to life. Um, yes, based on the work, um, we are working on a paper. Um, so it's still work in progress, but soon it will be published and you'll probably find it on the archive. Um, if you want to reach out, this is the content conservation and this is the last slide. So. Uh, if you have some feedback for me, or you want to get the slides, please go there. And uh, yes, uh, that's uh, all from me. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. How long does it take to crop an image? So we uh, don't use GPUs; we use CPU machines, and uh, it takes approximately one second and a half for an image. So it's. Uh, but it's still cheaper to use CPUs than GPUs. So for GPU, it will be 100 milliseconds. Uh, well, we re resize the image yeah. to 300 by 300. And then this is what we use for, for, for detecting the area where to crop. And then, uh, but the, the image can be pretty big. I don't know, a few thousand pixels. Uh, in yes, yes. So we resize. And then we find the, the bounding box of where we should crop, and then we extrapolate it back to the big image. So, um, in terms of performance and traffic, how many images you, you usually get now? Because we're only focusing on fashion. And yes, so this is. It should be able to scale up to all categories, so Kubernetes, it's not a problem. So, it's uh, less than 100,000, so it's like from 10 to 100. Per day, yeah. Per day. Wait, did you discuss that maybe the uploader should have control over whether the image is cropped or not? I sorry. So when the uploader uploads the image, mm -hmm. if you understand it correctly, then then later the image is silently changed. And yes. Also the image. Exactly. Would it be perhaps a good idea to uh, show that to the uploader? Yes, that's the next step. So right now we want to validate that our hypothesis is true. Uh, and um, we just want to do it in uh, the least intrusive way. Not to the user perhaps, but to the old monolith that we have. So changing the user flow will require a lot of effort. Uh, but if we see successful results, this is the next step. To actually let users see, okay, this is how we are going to crop your image. Are you fine with that or not? And of course, uh, some users are not happy about this. So then there is customer service. Uh, uh, they are aware about this. And then uh, they, uh, they just explain, OK, you're part of the experiment. Sorry that uh, it wasn't successful. Let us restore the, the cropped image. Uh, it'd be too early to say that. Uh, 
So A-B test is running, results are promising, uh, but probably we will try to do what was suggested is to, to make it a part of the flow. So actually, um, in uh, this paper, yeah. so at the end we ended up using a slightly different model what, from what I presented. So it's called Mask RCNN, and we replaced uh, the backbone with uh, this DSS. So it worked best. While giving great performance uh, in terms of cropping, it's also a lot slower. Two, two times slower. So there is this trade-off, okay, do we really want to make good cropping and be two times slower, or it's fine to sometimes make mistakes, but uh, no, be faster. Um, but indeed, having uh, other networks uh, is better, and this is the one of the um, outcomes of the thesis, is that the mask and model is the best for this one. So we, I didn't try, and for some reasons we went with this. So of course we discussed this, but we didn't end trying this. So because we saw the results are promising here, and this is the direction we we went. Is it possible to identify more than one object, one more, more salient objects? Uh, unfortunately, yes. And then uh, there is a problem: how do we crop it? That might be a feature also. Uh, yeah, but what then we do with this image? Uh, yes, but uh, the sometimes it happens when there are two objects close to each other. Uh, then the the model thinks that two are silent, two that both are important, and then it uh, crops around them. And but actually, the rules of the platform say that uh, you cannot sell two items at the same time. So there has to be only one item in the picture. Yes. Yes, that's one of the experiments we also want to run soon. So now we have the framework for running experiments. So this flow, that's why it's called Enhancer, because the idea is it doesn't just do cropping, it can do other things. Uh, for example, it makes the contrast, the contrast better, or uh, lightness, or uh, like things like this. And especially this just makes it beautiful, there are models for, for that. So they used to be able to do this, not anymore. <laughs> it's, uh, with video, it's not, uh, how to say, it's too much overhead on our side. And it doesn't uh, show uh, good business value. So users are asking for this, but they are fine with images. Thank you very much.